Welcome back to Femra Canine Training. On today's video, we're going to be answering some more of your guys' questions to help you become high-level canine leaders that can raise perfect canine companions. So welcome back guys, my name's Will. If you are new here, I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder and CEO here at FemreaCanineLeaders.com. This is my wonderful wife, Rachel. She's asked a question for you guys to ask questions over on Instagram. She's collated them, she's gonna pick some out at random. I'm hopefully gonna be able to give you an answer to help you out with any kind of problems, difficulties, or just general questions that you might have. So let's dive into the very dive first in. question. Okay, um, I have a, I'm probably gonna butcher the pronunciation of this, Adogo Argentino. That's so exactly how I'd say it. Puppy coming in August, what is the best way to satisfy prey drive? Okay, good question. Very good question. So Dogo Argentinos are one of the four breeds that are illegal here in the UK. So I don't actually have any first-hand experience with Dogos. I've helped lots of clients online through kind of my online consultation services with Dogos though. Um, and prey drive is a very interesting question. First and foremost, before you kind of go down the realm of working alongside prey drive and especially satisfying prey drive, because that prey drive got it wrong, and that can quickly escalate towards reactivity towards smaller animals, other dogs, even other children, smaller people, those kinds of things. You absolutely must ensure that you have an excellent relationship with your dog, that you're an excellent leader, and that you have excellent basic obedience to be able to keep them under control. Should that prey drive be tapped into in any way, um, in the wrong way you can turn it off as quickly as it starts so that's kind of my first recommendation focus on that first once you get to that stage if you then want to go down the realms of satisfying prey drive which can be fantastic it can be awesome for building relationship with your dog incredible mental stimuli stimulation physical exercise but you do just have to take it with that caveat of you have to be careful and ensure that you're under control can that I being said please do jump interject. in just what do you mean by satisfying prey drive are you good so dogs that have got about like, like retrieval work anything or? so prey drive so dogs have lots of different types of drive usually stemming from what they were originally bred to do for work prey drive being one of them usually around hunting dogs dogo argentino being bred to hunt large game has a large prey drive sully our work in labrador has a high retrieval drive some dogs have a high play drive some uh, there's lots of different drives and you can either suppress that drive if it's an issue or you can dive headfirst into it with Sully for example I dive into it and I use retrieval work as part of his mental stimulation relationship and obedience with myself as well as lots of easy physical exercise it's easy with retrieval work because it's not dangerous prey drive work like I mentioned earlier can quickly become dangerous so there's kind of two ones really um with some breeds with high drive, German Shepherds, Malinois, Connie Corsos, and you can do it with Dogos, bite work can be one. So you can get a bite sleeve, you can get a tug of war, and you can transition onto just general bite work. Obviously, it doesn't. it's not a genius to work out where that can go wrong, which is why it's so important to have a lot of control over that. And do you recommend working with a professional to yeah, do that? Yeah, or unless you're like a really high level kind of leader, in just an owner point of view, I would recommend you find, because you can get into IPO and show ring and those, you can do it in a, a club for fun. You don't have to go and work your dog and be a, be a policeman or in the military or in security. You can go and do those things for fun. And with breeds with high drive like that, it can be incredible for them and builds amazing relationship. So yes, probably if you want to go down that route, I'd go to a club. You can get those flirt sticks. Uh, like a, a lot you can make them yourself you can buy them long pole bit of string and then you can put something on the end of it a bite dummy or just a little uh, a tenant doesn't matter uh, you can get, send the dog out and you can whip the flirt stick around and you can get the dog i've got a clip of bruce wayne doing it with jason i'll overlay it on this video now that can be an incredible way to kind of satisfy that chasing something so for a dogo that could be good you could get a um a rabbit dummy or something on the end of a stick and you can get it whipping around and get the dogo chasing it that's an excellent I've never way heard of that. it's interesting i'll show you videos of it it's a really good way to exercise if you've got like got a really busy day today and i've only got 10 minutes 10 minutes with a flirt stick is like two hours out walking your dog it can be a real way and it can be dangerous for people doing it if you're not careful and it can be um it can cause issues elsewhere 
again tapping into prey drive so yeah i'd say bite work flirt stick things like that tug of war um even retrieval with a breed like a dogo chasing something down uh, taps into that prey drive then just putting a retrieve on the end of it is good obedience and then excellent exercise that's a good one if you're a bit concerned about the more bitey work um but again if you're concerned seek professional help and uh, that's my biggest thing always make sure you've got good obedience so you can control any of those scenarios in the first place any questions to interject there? I know that might have seemed a bit advanced. I hope it made sense. Mm -hmm. Cool. We'll dive into the next question then. Okay. So next question uh, is from Luke. How to deal with two dogs who have completely different personalities? So he's got an 11-year-old Rotty Cross Staffy who has no interest in play. 11-year-old Rotty Staffy that isn't interested in play. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, probably because it's 11 years old. It is what I was going to suggest. You're and a six-year-old Amstaff who loves nothing more than play. Yeah. Six years or six months? Mm, years. You are. I cool. think that's meant to be why are. Yeah, yeah, cool. Just so I know. Um, yeah, you're right. That is an old dog. That is a senior dog that is in its golden years that I completely understand wants to just relax and chill out. I don't know if it was playful when it was younger or it's always been that way. I'd be surprised if it wasn't playful when it was younger with the Staffy in it. Staffies are usually super playful. But even with all breeds, like how people, there's different personalities. It's kind of a scenario that, that we find ourselves in um, that... We have Sully, who's obviously very playful. Mm -hmm. um, and if we're ever at your mum and dad's, they have two older dogs who mm -hmm. are less interested in playing. But Sully still likes to give it a go every now and yeah. again. <laughs> and, I'll, and then that's where it's like a balance then. And because I am the leader in that situation, I deem, okay, cool. If I think Sully's getting a bit obnoxious or annoying the senior dogs, I have enough control to Sully here sit stay and then it breaks it up that's all that needs to be done so that's my advice if if you're concerned because the six-year-old is bothering the older dog and you don't want it to escalate uh, usually what will happen is playful dog goes over other dogs grumpy it's not grumpy teeth bare growling not mm. happy oh my lord everyone panics so that is where again obedience comes in because you can control that situation and, and calm it down and you just have to respect i don't like ever suppressing personality with dogs that's mm. not what my training methodology is around i don't like to do that some trainers want to turn dogs into robots i'm not a big fan of that especially in the in the working realm i get that a bit more in the companion realm i want my dogs to have personalities i want them to be themselves just in a control manner a control way that is well mannered for the other people and other dogs in its life so just like how with our boys if one of them was incredibly playful and the other one wanted to just sit and and play i wouldn't let the really playful one ruin i'd interject and no, leave him alone he's trying to do his thing he's working on this there's a time and a place and you'd interject i would just recommend a similar kind of principle don't you don't have to go in super heavy-handed if the playful dog's being overly playful go out and work them play some I was games gonna say, would you recommend mm. Like that you could do extra exercise. Yeah, that's exactly or... what I was going to, yeah. Go out, do some fetch, do some tug of war, do some obedience work and let the other dog just chill and do its thing. And, and, and that way you're kind of letting them be themselves and you're tapping into it. And then when you can come in, it might be time for cuddle time with the senior dog that does just want to kind of chill out and relax. It's just about being in control of the situation, which then like everything that we ever talk about goes back to leadership. You are the leader in that scenario. You are in control. If you are uncomfortable, you or this question 99 times out of 100 is asked because playful dog is annoying non-playful dog mm -hmm. and they don't want that to cause a fight so you have a responsibility there to ensure that the playful dog understands your rules boundaries and expectations and you have enough obedience to be able to control that so if you're having difficulties that's what you need to revert back to to be able to ensure that you can control it but don't try and make the playful dog less playful or the non-playful dog more playful that's just who they are you have a responsibility to manage that and allow them to be themselves and give them opportunities opportunity to be themselves that makes sense yeah should we wrap that one up there yeah you said should we wrap that up Have a... at the end of every video recently brilliant Let's we'll just... wrap it up we'll wrap it up that's how we roll thank you so much for watching subscribe like instagram to ask questions i forget all the time whether we need to tell them things that's enough isn't it yeah 
we like you all so if you want to come back it'd be cool if you did <laughs> that's kind of the basis of what we're saying um, we'll see you on the next video <laughs>